You cannot even show me one Bitcoin. Gentlemen, this is... What is up everyone? It's Adam from FWCI and I'm really excited for this one. This is the Mortal Kombat pitch meeting for the 2021 movie. Uh, I loved that movie. In fact, what I'm going to try and do is have a little bit of a spoiler review about the movie after the pitch meeting reaction, so stick around for that. But let's jump right into it. Mortal Kombat 2021 pitch meeting with Ryan George from Screen Rant. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to do more Ryan George videos as well. I see some pop up in my recommendeds that look like they're pretty funny, but... Let's check out the Mortal Kombat pitch. Oh yeah. So, you have a movie for me? Yes sir, I do. Mortal Kombat. Oh, that's that game where you mash a bunch of buttons and then somebody's <laughs> spine explodes and you need a bit of therapy. That's the one, sir. So that's I it. figure since the game is still super popular, we make a movie about it. It has been a while since we tried that, so what happens in this thing? Well, we're gonna start the movie in 1617 Japan, right? And Sub-Zero's gonna show up and kill Scorpion's family. Oh, extremely rude. Very impolite. For sure. And so in Chinese, <laughs> Sub-Zero's gonna be like, Hey, I ended your bloodline, you sucker. And Scorpion's gonna be like, I'm Japanese. I have no idea what you're talking about, but let's fight. <laughs> oh boy. So then they do fight, and Sub Zero ends up stabbing Scorpion real bad and then leaving. Oh, bad guys love leaving before making sure their enemy's really dead. Yeah, and so if he had stuck around, he would have seen that Scorpion was crawling towards his hidden baby and then turns into fire and disappears. Ah, so the bloodline is still going. Exactly. Yeah. And then after that really intense first scene, everything's gonna kind of go down downhill from there. Sure, if we start strong, we'll have people's attention and we could kind of stop trying st I just want to take this opportunity to say one word. Kano. Story-wise from there on out. So we're gonna meet this not very good MMA fighter named Cole Young, right? Oh, I don't remember true. him from the game. That makes sense, because I made him up. Oh, you did? Well, because this way the audience is gonna have someone to identify with, you know? Someone who's learning the rules of the world at the same time as them. I mean, there are like a hundred Mortal Kombat characters. Can't we just pretend like one of them is learning about this world for the first time? We could, but instead we're gonna spend a bunch of time developing this guy and his family. Is that gonna take screen yeah. time away from the characters mm. that fans came to see? Oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely a ton of it. Well, okay then. So Cole is actually a descendant of Scorpion, and he has this little dragon birthmark on him, and he keeps seeing flashes of Scorpion when he looks in the mirror. Okay. And because of this mark, Sub-Zero's gonna show up and try to kill him. Oh no. But then this guy Jax is gonna show up, and he's gonna be like, hey, you gotta go find Sonya Blade, and don't stay with your family, cause dark forces will murder them. Sounds yeah. like solid advice. It okay. is. And so then Sub-Zero rips off Jax's arms and leaves before making sure he's dead. I find where the movie is pretty good. Sometimes these pitch meetings, they have a hard time finding the jokes and it just becomes like explaining the plot. But last time I said that, they ended really strong. So let's keep going. Uh, so that's like this guy's whole thing. It is. So then Cole goes to see Sonya Blade and she has a whole wall of exposition to show him. I yeah. mean, she's all equipped for this exposition dump. So oh, what yeah. does Cole learn? Well, there's this big tournament between a bunch of realms and this bad guy Shang Tsung wants to kill all the champions before the tournament because he's a big fat cheater. So what decides who's a <laughs> champion? Oh, anyone with a dragon mark is a champion and either you're born with it or you kill someone who has it. So if you kill someone who has a mark, you automatically get it. Exactly, that's what happened with mm. this criminal guy Kano that Sonya captured. So like if a 95 year old senile grandpa accidentally runs over a champion, he will then have to fight to defend the Earth realm? Uh, I yeah, I guess so. so. Well let me ask you something, can we make that movie instead? Well I kind of worked hard <laughs> on this one. Fair enough, so what else? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I kind of liked the idea that the dragon mark is like the invitation to... Well, it's an invitation, it doesn't mean they're a champion, it means they can come. So, why a 90 year old man would want that? And I don't know if hitting someone with a car... Would, yeah, I don't know. It, I guess it does raise some questions. What else happens? So anyway, Kano knows where this guy Raiden has a temple, so they all head to that general area. Okay. And then this guy Liu Kang shows up, and he's like, it's my job to find champions, and I found you guys. I mean, sounds like they're pretty much there. <laughs> he didn't really do any of the work. Yeah, well, he's going to take credit for it. <laughs> Good for him. So then this Raiden guy is going to be like, all right, you all have this thing called Arcana. It's like a superpower. you got to unlock it, and that'll help mm. you in the tournament. Okay, okay. But Sonya doesn't have a mark, but she still gets to 
to hang out. Oh, he lets her hang out. Raiden sounds like a pretty chill guy. He's not. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they start training a whole bunch, and Kano, he unlocks a laser beam eyeball. He's real happy yeah. about it. How does he manage that? By arguing about egg rolls. What? But then yeah. things aren't really working out for Cole because he's the worst. So Raiden is like, all right, you got to get out of here, Cole. Go back to your family. And he's like, all right, I'm going home now. Bye. But there are still dark forces coming for him because of the mark, right? Yeah. So he goes back to his family. But his whole thing about going was so that they'd be safe. Yeah, he forgot about that part, so he goes back to his family. Well, okay then, but what? Raiden sent him back there, and I think Raiden knew that, yeah, that was going to create the kind of trauma that Cole needed. And same with the egg rolls. Uh, Kung Lao definitely antagonized Kano into that furious anger, because, yeah, obviously beating the shit out of him didn't help, but disrespecting him very publicly tipped him over the edge. While he's back home, this big monster Goro's gonna be sent to kill him. Oh, I remember Goro. He was like a big boss guy. Gonna be tough to beat him. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, when Cole's family's in danger, that's when he unlocks his superpowers. So he defeats Goro, yeah. no problem. Oh, so he becomes Scorpion? No, he gets a cool little outfit made entirely of plot armor. Okay, kinda seemed like you were building up to him becoming Scorpion. Yeah, that may have seemed like the cooler and more logical point to build towards, but instead Cole is going to transform it to Cole with a cooler sweater. Sure, that may as well happen. Anyway. You know, I never thought that Cole would turn into Scorpion when he got his Arcana, but I don't know if I was supposed to think that, but that would have been cool. And so meanwhile, Kano betrays everybody and lets the bad guys into Raiden's temple. Oh no. So they start kicking everybody's butts and that Shang Tsung guy grabs this guy Kung Lao. What's he going to do to him? Well, this one guy's like, oh, he's about to get his soul sucked. Oh, getting your soul sucked is- Nope, don't say it. <laughs> Oh, getting your soul. Please, please stop. It's just that's kind of my do thing. It. Every meeting I say that something do is tight. It. I know. Do it's it. just kind of my catchphrase. I'm going to feel do weird it. all day if I don't get it out. Yeah, Come no, on. I know. It's just sometimes it's random, but sometimes it's kind of gross. So maybe just get that out later when I'm gone. Oh, uh. getting it out later when you're gone is tight. Okay. <laughs> so then what happens? Well, then Raiden teleports all the good guys to this white <laughs> void where the bad guys. You know, Ryan George is awesome at a uh, running joke. Uh. Can't Classic. go. What, there's a white void where the bad guys can't go? Why didn't they train there? Well, because there's this whole thing where Raiden's not allowed to intervene. But he's intervening now. He is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the group is like, listen up, guys. We need to fight these bad guys again, but this... Raiden is a line stepper. Habitually. He's a habitual line stepper. Time, we gotta win. How? What's changed? Well, see, the movie's almost over, so all the good guys are gonna be much better fighters now. Oh, okay, great. Also, that Jax guy had little robot chicken arms, but now he has big, big, big robot arms. How did that happen? <laughs> Magic. Magic gave him robot arms? Magic gave him robot arms, that's right. So then one of the good guys is like, hey, Raiden, you can teleport anyone anywhere, right? He can do what? He can teleport anyone anywhere. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna teleport teleport these bad guys to various locations and then we'll fight them. Well, why doesn't he teleport the bad guys into a volcano or to the bottom of the ocean? Okay, so see, that would be an instance where he couldn't intervene, but he can yeah. separate them with teleportation so they're defeated in battle. That's right. So does yeah. he teleport each bad guy to a different location and have all the champions gang up on that person and just kind of work his way through the line like that? No, see, that's a way he nope. wouldn't be able to intervene. Oh, I'm very unclear on how this guy's allowed to inter- Come on, it's Mortal Kombat, this is one-on-one -on -one shit, except at the end where it's two-on-one. Intervene, so what does he do? Well, he sends them all to like 1v1 fights, because that's like the game, kind yeah, of. That's like the game, go. kind of. It, it is, is like so then the Sonya's game, gonna of. defeat Kano and get her superpowers immediately. How come she gets her superpower at the same time as her mark? I don't know. Fair enough. And then Sub-Zero's gonna freeze Cole's family, which is maybe something that people will care about. Maybe. And then Scorpion's gonna show up from hell and he's gonna be like, get over here. What, did he take English lessons? Lessons in hell? He took some very specific <laughs> English lessons in hell, that's right. So then they're gonna have this really cool fight while Cole just assaults his frozen family in the background. What? And then they're gonna team up and manage to defeat him. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And so, yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Wait, so a bunch of the big bad guys were killed? They were, yeah. So if we want to make a sequel, we can't use any of those guys. Well, we're gonna say that death yeah. is just another portal, so. Oh, so none of this mattered. Yeah, none of this mattered, and we could just keep making more and more and more and more more of these. I mean, let's not get crazy. Okay, okay. But what if we did get crazy, though? Oh, interesting. Come on, oh, yeah, what okay. do we got? Five movies! Yeah! Now, that's what I'm talking about. Whew, all right. 
That was really funny. I think all the stuff with the Arcana of like them getting their powers, I think it made a lot more sense than they gave it credit for in that video. Like, uh, you know, the type of power they got. I mean, Kano, you know, at the time he was getting shit talk from someone across the room. Uh, you know, Cole, he was just getting pummeled by Goro, so his thing, like, was became like a protective thing, so maybe the Arcana is, like, specific to that exact circumstance where it triggers, which would explain why Jax has got the, uh, the giant arms as a part of his Arcana, but... Man, let's have a quick chat about the movie. I like to break this down into three separate bits. Uh, presentation, characters, and plot. And the phone's running out of uh, battery, so let's smash right into it. Um, the presentation was awesome. This is what we should be expecting from a Mortal Kombat movie in 2021. The CGI was uh, really nice. The music was pretty good. The I liked that they brought back the Mortal Kombat theme in a bit of an orchestral way. I think they could have done a bit more of that, though. Like, the, the music was fitting but it was also kind of forgettable at the same time uh, and the loyalty to the source material was actually quite impressive we'll talk a bit more about that in the uh, plot part later on they did change some stuff but overall it was um pretty accurate to the game so if we have a talk about the characters the main character was cole um i think he was probably the low light of the movie uh the actor's a great martial artist and that's why they got him doing that we got a lot of great shots of him actually doing really cool martial arts stuff but I don't think he could quite display the emotional turmoil that Cole was going through like he just came across as a bit sour and a bit of a downer and ooh, like it we didn't really get like the payoff to when he got his uh, arcana and he got his weird like protective suit thing I, I don't think it was worth the, the wait and it didn't really have that pop that you would want a uh, moment like that to have. So the powers were kind of lame. Uh, yeah, he was, he, it wasn't like overly offensively bad, but not the highlight of the movie. So a lot of Aussies in this movie. One was actually uh, Sonya Blade, who was played by Jessica McNamee. She was awesome for exposition in this movie. I like the fact that we sort of got plunged into her and Jax's search about finding out what's going on with this Mortal Kombat thing. They're like, hey, come in here. This is what we've learned so far. It was just a, a good way to do that. She was pretty uh, true and accurate to the original character as well. So was Jax. So I had no complaints about either of those characters or their storylines. We had Liu Kang and Kong Lao. Uh, they were, again, kind of like in the same way that Sonya and Jax were there for exposition. Kong Lao and Liu Kang were there for that in the later part of the movie. Like they really seem to be like a duo in here. So I guess this movie kind of wound back Liu Kang's role in the Mortal Kombat story. Usually he's the, the focal point and this he's just, you know, a uh, seasoned warrior that's here to train these new, um, you know, challenges that are coming up to compete. So uh, I enjoyed that. They were, like I say, very uh, authentic to the game. Kong Lao was uh, definitely pretty cool. Liu Kang's mullet could have been a little bit more mulletier, I would say, but I liked what they did with both of these characters, especially Kong Lao getting the opportunity to do his uh, fatality and Liu Kang hitting the animality as well. And continuing on with like this double character thing, Raiden and Shang Tsun. Again, these were two characters that I felt were very similar in this movie. They both didn't really do a great deal for me. I didn't really enjoy Raiden's uh, attitude in this. Like he was a kind of a, a grumpy god. Uh, he wasn't, he didn't seem to be very inspiring or anything like that. But with that being said, he wasn't in the movie very much. Same with Shang Tsung. He was very weird. I didn't like the voice that they used for him at all. The actor was perfectly good, but the blacked out eyes, I, I don't know. There was, he, there was something very um, feminine about Shang Tsung in this one here. And it just, I've never seen Shang Tsung in that kind of uh, way before. And it just was very weird. But I don't really get into either of these characters. Uh, I hope they do better with these in the next four movies. <laughs> and we had Scorpion. Uh, so Scorpion was in the movie, but he wasn't really in the movie for most of it. Uh, the way that they told his story in the background kind of through Cole and, uh, you know, through the uh, introduction and the obviously the ending of the movie as well, I thought was a great way to have that character as a part of it without the need to try and input that character throughout the whole plot of the story. Just a good way to have it simmering in the background and then you get to bring it out for the big climax at the end of the big fight scene and everything like that. So I uh, loved what they did with Scorpion. I loved all the uh, skull effects that they used for him. Definitely keen to see more of him in the next movies as well. So we had a whole bunch of Aussie talent in the villains of this movie. We had Cabal who was voiced by Damon Harriman who 
played Charles Manson in the, uh, what's it called, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood movie. He's an Aussie actor. Rico, played by former WWE star Nathan Jones, another big Aussie uh, actor. Goro was voiced by Angus Sampson. And if you've never seen Angus Sampson doing what he usually does, which is comedy, um, you should really go and check that out because uh, finding out that he did the voice of Goro was a very head scratching move. But I didn't find out till after the movie and I thought it was awesome the way they had Goro in this movie as well. So uh, the CGI on Goro was okay, but the, having him interacting with like cars and houses and like stuff in the real world, that was something that really made this movie feel unique and still Mortal Kombat like. We had Natara, who, again, not in the movie a great deal and obviously very expendable. Uh, Melina, played by Sissy Stringer, another Aussie actress. Fun, totally expendable characters. Pretty true to the game as well, especially Cabal, his moveset where he's kind of teleporting around like, I hope the next Mortal Kombat movie they bring in even more characters. We're so well advanced with technology now, with CGI and stuff. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to make every single move from this game look like a realistic thing happening in the real world. So uh, I really enjoyed the villains and uh, interesting to see what uh, old mate Ryan said about it being a portal and whether we'll see these villains again. But I saved the best for last. Kano, played by Josh Lawson, he was the MVP of this movie. Every review that I've watched about this, everyone's kind of agreed that Kano is the star of this movie and so devoted to see him die at the end. But again, if we're going to see Kano come back, he did steal the amulet of Shinnok, I think it's called. Uh, we never actually saw him give that back, so he might have that as a way to um, resurrect himself or something like that. From the day they announced Josh Lawson as playing Kano, I was completely on board. I love Josh Lawson. In fact, I'll link in the comments uh, a video that I just uploaded, which uh, talks about Josh Lawson being on this hilarious uh, Aussie, old Aussie comedy show. Um, but I went into this movie with the same attitude I had towards Dave Batista being Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy. I went in there thinking, okay, Batista looks like Drax. He's probably going to stand in the background, do a bunch of Drax shit in the um, fight scenes, and that'll probably be his role. Came out thinking Drax was the funniest part of that movie. Same deal with Kane. I was like, ah, he's probably just going to be there to be a little bit Aussie. But he was so involved. He had a lot of action scenes and a great plot point and the turning on the good guys towards the end as well. So... No complaints at all about Kano, just hilarious meta jokes. I'd be very curious to hear from anyone who doesn't think that Kano was the highlight of this movie because anytime he was on screen, it just made everything that much more entertaining. So talking about the plot, uh, it was not the typical Mortal Kombat plot with the tournament. Uh, this one basically was Shang Tsung, you know, breaking the rules of the tournament and trying to take out Earth's champions before the tournament as kind of a preemptive win. I don't know what the rules around Mortal Kombat are, but obviously Shang Tsung can do this because it's happening so don't see any uh, point in complaining about that feeling inconsistent or anything like that Shang Tsung's a villain and he's doing villainous shit what can we say uh, but we had some really important characters enter the story fully formed so like Liu Kang and Kung Lao for example and uh, we had a lot of Mortal Kombat lore with the Sub-Zero and Scorpion fight at the beginning so it was a good variety of giving us new characters to learn about giving us characters we knew about giving us characters that are you know further along in their journey than you know we're used to seeing them begin a movie franchise with so i had no problems with the way that they kind of messed with the timeline of mortal kombat and just put the characters in different roles they did a great job with the scorpion storyline as i mentioned having that sort of going on in the background and the way it sort of triggered through Cole's, you know, interaction with the blade and with the uh, the mural on the wall and, you know, whatever it else it ended up being. So, love the Scorpion storyline. I really enjoyed the uh, Arcana element and how each person gets their own power sort of manifest, you know, because they're one of the chosen ones. So, I thought that was just a great way to explain and also have a bit of growth for the characters as well. So, I can't really poke any holes in that at all. I thought that was fantastic. But all in all, I think this was the Mortal Kombat movie that we expected and I'm pretty sure we got what we wanted the, the blood and gore was there as well we got a lot of uh, adult content with like a lot of swearing and that kind of thing 
the story was, you know, very true to the Mortal Kombat games and the character, like having Cabal in there, like he is such a deep cut into the Mortal Kombat world. And they did so much justice to that character and all of the extra characters that they had. And obviously Mortal Kombat has a gigantic roster to pick from. So I hope we're gonna see a lot more death and destruction in these movies. And it leads to movie number five, which is just gonna be, you know, everybody comes back and it's just complete chaos. So uh, loving this one here. And the fact that it's uh, made in Australia and had so many uh, Aussie actors in it as well, just makes me even more proud of how this movie turned out. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed this movie. And on top of that, I hope you enjoyed my review and my reaction to the pitch meeting. Thank you for sticking around for the review. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see me react to in the future, or let me know what you think about the Mortal Kombat movie. And go check out the Josh Lawson video that's on my channel. I think you will enjoy it. It's quite funny. And uh, as always, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace.